Hello everybody, Alex Aquarius here. here I've got something for you that's pretty huge. If you think that the earth is a flat plane and that we do not live on a spinning ball and you think that that is the biggest lie that has ever been perpetrated on mankind, you may be mistaken as far as your religious beliefs are concerned. As you can see at the top of my screen here, Gnosis, Jesus Beyond Belief documentary is an excellent documentary. Did you know that the man who was known as Jesus, that of course was not his real name, has a burial site, a tomb in India near Kashmir in a little town called Srinagar. S-R-I-N-A-G-A-R, -A -A if you want to look it up. It appears that Jesus survived the crucifixion. He had a near-death experience, but his people revived him. With Joseph of Arimathea, they took all of the products and herbs and minerals and things that they needed to revive him. They got him back to life. And they rolled away the stone, and they took him out, and he escaped Israel. Israel being the trinity of Isis, Ra, and Horus, El. And he left, and he went to India. After that, he toured all over the world. He went south of Turkey. He went through Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and through uh, Pakistan, all the way to the Himalayas. He went to China. There were some missionaries in the 90s that found his Sermon on the Mount in a monastery in China. And then the Chinese monk said, hey, you want to read the Sermon on the Mount? Jesus left with us when he came and taught us. But they didn't call him Jesus. They called him Isa. But I'm telling you, folks, I'm not going to make this deep and with a lot of details. But just start researching. Jesus survived the crucifixion. If you know about Baal worship and Easter and Tammuz and the rabbit and the fertility orgies and the temples of Baal, you know about the winter solstice and that Tammuz died for three days from the 22nd of December to the 25th at the winter solstice and was born again, resurrected, which baptism resurrect, uh, represent when you're immersed in water at baptism like in a river or a font, you die, you're buried, and then you come back up out, representing the death and resurrection of Tammuz, not Jesus. Now, the person who was Christ, I believe, lived on earth. He came here and he was teaching things. He had traveled, but when he was 13 years old, he took off across the globe. He went to places with his father to deliver furniture and carpentry across the Mediterranean, went through Greece, Spain, Portugal, later on through the Silk Road out to, through Turkey to uh, Turkmenistan and then to, through Pakistan and what we call India, across the Himalayas to Tibet, which is probably where he learned and studied to walk on water and learned about vibration, the chakras. And he taught us how to meet God and how to raise our vibration up if you think that you've discovered the Illuminati was formed in 1776, think again. Go back to before the times of Jesus, all the way back to Nebuchadnezzar, even before that. Go back to Ur, where Abraham lived. When Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt, and there was, uh, salt, and there was a nuclear war in uh, Sumer. There are more ancient books than the Hebrew Bible. There's the Era Epos. There's the Lamentations of Sumer. Uh, there's a lot to look at, folks. I'm just saying, open your mind. Think, Jesus did not have to die on a cross, which is the center of the zodiac wheel in astrotheology, representing the winter solstice and the life of Tammuz, who was followed by 12 disciples, died on the 22nd and was born again on the 25th of December. According to the pattern of the sun which follows the winter solstice. This is also traceable in the Vatican. If you look at the Vatican square, which is a circle, circling the square, and you look at uh, 
I'm not going to get into all the details. I'm not going to share a lot. I'm not going to tell you where it's all at. I'm just saying, look, I'm Christian. I grew up Christian. I believe in a Christ now that's cross-free. I don't believe Christ died on the cross in Israel. I think he escaped the Sanhedrin Council and the people that were there with the Romans had their secret societies and they created the astrotheological story, story of Tammuz and made the New Testament, which is obviously a zodiac-based story of astrotheology. I, people say, yeah, Christ never existed. I don't believe that. I think the man actually came from God's presence and was incarnated on this earth as Christ. But you have to be careful. Even the name Christ refers to someone who is anointed with oil in a third dimensional ritual on earth with oil by a high priest. So careful. Just think of God came here, tried to teach us how to raise up our vibration, how to have pure love, how to clean out our, our bodies and our spirits and have a pure enough vibration that we could see God, that we could walk on water. He taught Peter how to walk on water, and Peter did walk on water. Peter wasn't the quote-unquote son of God, and he walked on water. So Jesus taught him, and he learned. He fell, he lost his concentration. But why would this person known as Jesus, which I think is a negative connotation nickname given to him by the society, what was his name uh, when he went to China and he went over to the east? Isa. When he was buried in India, he was known as Isa. He lived to be over 100 years old. He traveled the world. He did all kinds of things. You can find all of these records in the eastern countries. Just go look. I'm going to share with you this video, Gnosis, Jesus Beyond Belief. Just take a look at it. I'm convinced Jesus did not die on a cross and he did not die to pay for our sins. Perhaps the most, the biggest lie ever told to mankind and backed up with armies of crusades is Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. That's two lies in one. He didn't die on the cross. He survived and escaped Israel and he didn't need to pay for our sins. He was trying to teach us how to raise our vibration and purify our lives so that we got to a vibration where we could rise up and ascend and see God. There's no paying for sin. That's penance. That's a whole pagan concept. If you're Christian and you're thumping the Bible, think again about the Bible brought to you by the Cabal from before Constantine, from even before Jesus was born and lived his life. There was a mystery school from Nebuchadnezzar's reign from the 70 years that the Palestinians were in the reign of Nebuchadnezzar under the mystery schools where they came out and they knew about Tammuz and the orgies of Easter, Semiramis, their fertility rituals, death, resurrection. The truth is reincarnation, folks. If you're Christian, be cross free, be cross free. realize it's carnation. Baptism is not necessary. Baptism is the representation of the death of and the resurrection of Tammuz, who became Baal, the sun god, who was the son of Semiramis and the husband of Semiramis, who married his mother. The stories of the virgin Jesus stepping on the snake, while Mary's stepping on the snake and bleeding heart Mary is holding the baby. That painting is from a thousand years before Jesus ever lived. That's the story of Baal. Read deeper. Go back further. Don't sit and thump your Bible and believe in the Hebrew version. That's all I'm going to say. Let me show you a little bit of this movie here from about the time when Jesus was 13. We'll cover much of the significant evidence suggesting that this is, in fact, the real tomb of Jesus later in this film. But just to give you a tantalizing glimpse of things to come, take a look at these footprints that were also discovered at the Roosevelt Shrine. In these footprints, you can clearly see for yourself that they have markings on them the exact same places that nails would have gone had they been pierced through someone who had been crucified. And they match identically the patterning on the Shroud of Turin, the wounds of someone who had a nail driven through their feet, left foot over right. While the evidence is not ironclad, the case for Jesus doing his training in India during the block of 18 years unaccounted for in the Bible is substantial, and there is certainly nothing untenable in this view. 
In fact, it's quite the opposite. There isn't a shred of evidence to support the theory that in those 18 years, Jesus stayed back in Palestine, becoming an enlightened master while being a carpenter. As you begin to sift through the information in this presentation and do your own research, ask yourself which version of events makes more sense. The orthodox view presented in the Bible, or the alternative explanation of events provided here. One thing is very clear. A very famous holy man was buried in this shrine 1900 years ago. A man so highly regarded that kings honored him, and that the shrine built for him survived to this day. You be the judge. Examine all of the evidence and the case presented here to you, and ask yourself, could this be true? Based on some of the ancient texts that have been discovered, we can piece together a travelogue of Jesus' 18-year journey. At around the age of 13, when Jewish boys were typically engaged, and many of the prominent families in the region all wanted their daughters married off to this young sage, Jesus evaded matrimony by taking the old Silk Road and heading off to the east, to the land of the mystics. To take the old Silk Road, he would have first headed north from Palestine to find a caravan, and along the route, he would have made a stop at Damascus in Syria, and then head east towards Baghdad in Babylon. From there, he would have continued east towards the region near what is now known as Tehran in Persia, eventually reaching the city of Bactra in northern Afghanistan, before finally turning south towards the Indus Valley region in northwest India. By the age of 14, he had reached the holy city of Palitana in the Gujarat region in India, home of the Jain tradition. The Jain tradition was started 500 years earlier by the sage Mahavir Bardamana at around the same time as Buddha, and it's even possible that Buddha and Mahavir's paths had crossed some time in history. Mahavir taught that men and women are spiritual equals and that both had the right to search for ultimate happiness. Jesus stayed and studied with the Jain priests for a year, and then headed further east to Puri in Orissa, home of some of the most holy Hindu temples and saints. It's worth taking a moment here to bring clarification to some of the many misconceptions about Hinduism, which many in the East don't even consider as a religion, but more of as a lifestyle. Contrary to conventional thinking here in the West, Hinduism is neither a polytheistic or pagan religion such as what existed in the Roman Empire at the time of Christ, but rather a monotheistic faith based on one universal supreme being. In fact, while Abraham is considered to be the father of monotheism, this is incorrect as Hinduism predates Judaism by thousands and perhaps tens of thousands of years. With such deities as Ganesha, the elephant-headed god, Hanuman, the monkey god, and many other gods, it's easy to understand how Hinduism could be mistakenly compared to the paganistic religions of the Romans with their many gods, but in Hinduism, these deities are all just representations of one supreme being. The teachings in Hinduism can be traced back to the Vedas, which possibly go back hundreds of thousands of years. Nobody knows. Hinduism already existed long before Krishna was born 5,000 years ago, and it even existed before Rama lived, somewhere around 10,000 years ago. While at Puri, Jesus would have visited such regional holy cities such as Rajariha and Benares, and ended up staying in Puri for about six years, studying the Vedas alongside the Brahmin priests. Eventually, however, Jesus began to do what he did best, which was to share his egalitarian knowledge with both women and with people within the lower caste system in India about the inequities he saw and errors in Hindu doctrine that became distorted and diluted over time. As a result, he upset the Brahmin and warrior ruling elite classes, and there was a plot to assassinate him. Forewarned of this threat, Jesus then escaped Puri and moved on to Kapovastu, another holy site in India where Buddha had trained thousands to become enlightened, and he stayed there for another six years, studying with the Gautamites, learning the Pali and Tibetan languages, and thoroughly reading all the ancient Buddhist scrolls there. After his stay in Kapovastu, Jesus then headed to Lhasa in Tibet, where the Mansur Monastery was built for the Dalai Lama in the 1800s. He then traveled along the Himalayas to Leh in Ladakh, home of the Hemis Monastery, and then began his trip back to Judea. On his return trip, 
Jesus traveled through the Rajasthana region in central India, then north to Kabul, and then west to Persepolis in Persia, where he stayed for a length of time with the Zoroastrians, a religious sect that also purportedly started some 500 years earlier. But that date is subject to speculation. Again, after some time, Jesus had upset the local priest, and they set him out amongst wild animals, presumably to meet his own demise. But he once again evaded death and moved on to Athens, Greece, home of the great philosophers Plato, Homer, and Aristotle, before then heading across the Mediterranean Sea to Alexandria in Egypt, where he had spent some time in his youth, and then finally back home to Palestine. After a nearly 18-year spiritual odyssey, spanning thousands of miles in dozens of countries, learning from all the great spiritual masters of the time, Jesus was ready to embark on his own spiritual ministry. We know all of this because it is all chronicled in the manuscript in this Buddhist Lama's lap, a document known as The Life of Saint Isa, the Best of the Sons of Man. In two separate locations along Jesus' ancient journey, in both Lhasa in Tibet, as well as Leh in Ladakh, there exist copies of this book that are dated back to within three to four years after the crucifixion, one in the ancient Pali language, and another one that is translated into Tibetan. These manuscripts are still housed at these locations today, and have been viewed by sources several times over the past 150 years, and translated by at least two independent researchers corroborating the original text. In 1939, Elizabeth Kaspari, who was famous for starting the first Montessori school in the United States, along with her friend Mrs. Clarence Gask, while traveling through Leh, were shown the document and took the preceding photograph of the Lama holding the book. Fifteen years earlier, Swami Abedananda, an extremely holy man and disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, traveled to the Hemis Monastery to prove or disprove this document's existence, and was able to completely verify the modern translation of the scroll. And in 1887, a Russian researcher by the name of Nicholas Notovich was the first Westerner to rediscover this ancient text and published a German translation in 1893. In the Hindu tradition, the head of the religion is given the title of Shankaracharya, which could be considered to be a title similar to that given to the Catholic Pope or the Dalai Lama. Sri Bharati Krishna Tirtha, the Shankaracharya in Puri, the same city where Jesus is said to have spent six years, was interviewed in 1959 about Jesus in India, and he confirmed with the interviewer that he had read manuscripts at the Jagannath Temple documenting Jesus' time there, and that Jesus was indeed known as Isa. And as recent as 2008, the current Shankaracharya, Swami Nishal Ananda Saraswati, also confirmed the existence of these documents at the Jagannath Temple. There is other evidence of Jesus doing his training in India, such as inscriptions with his sayings carved into temple walls, and customs and traditions that Jesus brought back from India to Palestine. But by far the most convincing evidence of all that Jesus did his training in India is the Gospel according to Thomas. Most people have still never heard of the Gospel of Thomas, and fewer still have ever read it, in spite of the fact that it only takes one to two hours to read. The Gospel According to Thomas was brought to prominence with Dan Brown's fictional thriller, The Da Vinci Code, but the important fact to remember here is that this manuscript is just one of literally hundreds of biblical texts written about Jesus that were lost, burned, or otherwise destroyed in the first three centuries leading up to the creation of the canonical Bible most people are familiar with. Undoubtedly, some of the books about Jesus were most likely fictional accounts authored by people who report stories based on third or fourth hand testimonies, others that were inspired by dreams and visions, and still other documents that were probably flat out forgeries. Some housekeeping of the enormous volume of literary material may have been appropriate, but when you compare the vast amount of works that we know of, even filtering out some of the less credible material, against the material that was ultimately used to create the Bible, what you're left with is a set of documents that resemble a heavily redacted CIA memo. There may be some truth or facts left in, but so much has been left out that the pedigree and veracity of the original documentation has been compromised. Luckily for us, recent archaeological finds have provided us with fragments and even full books of the Gospel of Philip, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, and the Gospel of Judas. 
What the hell is the Gospel of Judas? Nobody knew until about a year ago when it was published for the first time. It's 2,000 years ago it was written. And we knew there was one because Bishop Irenaeus mentioned it. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to leave links below for the video that this came from. But just think about it. Jesus did not die upon the cross, and he did not die to pay for your sins. And his blood and flesh, which is a Luciferian sacrifice ritual to drink blood and eat flesh, which has been converted into quote-unquote Christianity, is blasphemy. Think about it, folks. Just start doing your research. Go out to start with Kashmir and think of all of the records that were burned, destroyed, and lost. And go all the way past the Himalayas. Go to China and start looking in the east to the life of Isa, who we know as Jesus. All right? This is Alex Aquarius, Plain Mundane Show. Please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and please wake up to this. Jesus did not die on the cross to pay for your sins.